All right, homework 7.3 has two parts. The first part is uh, about investing money with different compounding, uh, different ways of compounding. And the second part is on properties of exponents. So the first part, I'm gonna do three problems. Uh, it says invest $1,000 at a 6% annual rate. This means at the end of each year, annual, means at the end of the year, they give you 6% more than what you had. Um, so the way this will work is it says to write an equation, and the equation will be, since it's x, whenever there's a percentage uh, growth, that will be an exponential function. And so we need the starting amount and the constant multiplier. We invested $1,000, so that's our starting amount. And we're going to multiply by, we're not multiplying by 6%. We're going to multiply by 1 to get us back to the $1,000 we already had. And we're going to add in... 6%, which is 0 0.06. So when this distributes, 1,000 times 1 is 1,000, and it'll add in 6%. And every year, we'll multiply it to get times 1 to get us back to where we were, and we'll add in 6%. Uh, and so that'll be to the x power, because every year we'll do that. And so this is uh, what makes it exponential, is that every year we'll multiply it by uh, 1.06. And that's not the way we usually write it. We write it as uh, instead of 1 plus 0 0.06, we just write 1.06. To find out how much money we have after 10 years, well, we just need to plug in what 10 is. And you can do that in the calculator. You will need a calculator for this. Um, if you're not using one of our yellow calculators, you need to do 1.06 to this power first, and then multiply by 1,000, because um, pro, uh, PEMDAS says you do exponents before multiplying. All right, the next one is what if you borrow $12,000 on a credit card that charges this annual interest rate, but it's compounded semi-annually? Um, so they're charging, they're giving you, charging you 15.25% interest. And so it's gonna be very similar to what it was before, which is Y equals, you owe 12,000 to start, and you're gonna pay one plus the interest rate. Uh, we need to move the decimal twice because percent we divide by 100. So point zero point one five two five, but they're not charging you. That's not what they're multiplying by. Semi annually means twice per year, and so what's going to happen is they're going to charge you this over the full year. But if they're doing it twice per year, they're going to take that rate and divide it into two parts. And so we can just put that straight into our formula: one plus this rate divided into two parts, but they're not just going to charge it to you once per year, they're charging it two times per year. So in X years, the number of times you will have to pay that is two times however many years it is. So two times the number of years, that's how many times you'll do it. So we divide the interest rate by two, but we do it two times the number of years, that's how many times you'll have to pay that interest rate. And again, we can just plug in X to find out how much you'll owe after that many years. Um, if you're doing it in a calculator that is not one of ours, the best way to do it is to divide this first, then add one, then you would do to this power, and you would want to find out what 2X is, so 14, do it to the 14th power, and then multiply by 12,000. Um, finally, if something is compounded continuously, that's like they do it a million times per year, but even more than that, um, the equation is completely different. Uh, the continuous growth equation is y equals um, p e to the r t. p is your starting amount or principal, r is the rate, and t is the time. And notice the rate, there's no adding one to it. Um, so the equation should be y equals our starting amount, our principal, 1 million, times E, and the number E is about 2.718, dot, dot, dot. Um, PE to the RT, the rate here is 0 0.08 times the time, which is X. Notice it is not 1.08. And this time it says, find out how much you made after 10 years, not how much money you have. And to find out how much money you made, you need to find out how much money you have minus what you started with. So uh, after 10 years, it should be a million, the million dollars you started with times E to the 0.08 times 
times 10. That'll give us how much money we have after 10 years, and we need to subtract away the million we started with and evaluate this in a calculator to find out how much money we'll have after 10, how much money we made. So how much money we made is how much we ended up with minus how much we started with. Um, and we need to say what that's equal to. <clears throat> All right, this part, the back you don't need a calculator for, uh, but you do need to have some knowledge of the properties of exponents you need. So there are a few properties of exponents that you're supposed to know. Um, the first is if you have uh, two things with the same base and you multiply, you add the exponents. The second thing is if you have two things with the same base and you divide, you can simplify by subtracting the exponents, the top one minus the bottom one. If you have a power to another power, uh, you can simplify this by multiplying the exponents. And we got into why this was in class, but I won't do that here. There's a couple other properties you need, which is that anything to the zeroth power is one, and anything to the one power is itself. And anything to a negative power just means you're dividing by that power. Um, the last thing is if there's more than one thing happening here to one of these powers, uh, you do each of the bases separately. Um, and so we'll look at that in a second. Um, so here are some ones I'm going to go over. These have the same base, and they are multiplying, and so we leave the base the same, and we add these together. 10 plus negative 5 is 5. So there's our answer, 3 to the 5th power. Here, we have two things dividing, so we're going to use our subtracting rule. This will be m to the 10 minus 20, which is negative 10. However, we don't leave uh, our answer with negative exponents. This is 1 over m to the 10th. Um, there was another way to do it, which is you could divide by m to the 10th and m to the 10th here, uh, and then you would just end up with m to the 10th on the bottom and a 1 on the top. Uh, there's, there's more than one way to do a lot of these. Here, we have a power to a power, and the rule is when you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. These are starting to get a little harder, where there is uh, multiple rules going on. I see that there is something inside of a parentheses to a power, and so that means it's this times this times this times this four times. There are four separate things that will all be multiplying times themselves four times. When there's a constant to the fourth power, we can just do that. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. m to the third to the fourth power, well, that's a power to a power rule, and so those will multiply. That's m to the twelfth power. And n to the eighth to the fourth power is n to the thirty-second power, because, again, it's a power to a power, and those will multiply. Now, I notice that there's a dividing. There's no special rule that says when you're dividing, you subtract. When you're dividing, you divide. 16 divided by 4 is 4. m to the 12th divided by m to the 12th, now we can subtract. And um, there's two ways to think about this. One way to think about it is when we're dividing two things with the same base and they have exponents, we can subtract their exponents. That's m to the 0th power. The last thing is these are uh, subtract dividing, and so we can do n to the 32nd. This is n to the first power, even though there's no one written there n is n to the first power, and so n to the 32nd power divided by n to the first power is n to the 31 power. And this can be still simplified more, because anything to the 0 power is 1. 4 times 1 is 4, and so it's just 4n to the 31st power. Again, there's more than one way to do these, but this is how I saw it here. I'm going to do one more. Um, here we have 1 27th times 3 to the x squared plus 3, and the weird thing about this one is that uh, these don't have the same base. And so there's no way to multiply these right now. You can't multiply 127th times 3 because this is to a power and exponents happen before uh, powers do. Uh, exponents happen before multiplying does. So we want to find a way to rewrite this as a power of 3. We're going to use our exponent properties to do that. 127th is 3 to a power. And we know it needs to be a negative power because negative powers tell you to divide. So it'll be 3 to a negative power. And we need 3 times 3 times 3 to get to 27. So we need 3 to the third power. 3 to the negative third power is 1 over 27. And so we rewrite it using the same base as we have in the other one. That way we can use our properties of exponents. Now that we're multiplying, we can add the exponents together. 
negative 3 plus x squared plus 3. We can combine these like terms and get 3 to the x squared plus 0, which is just x squared. So there's our answer. All right, hope that helps.